वेलकम बैक वी वर डिस्कसिंग द लोड फ्लो एनालिसिस इन द प्रीवियस ट्यूटोरियल वी डिस्कस्ड ऑन गॉस सिडल मेथड नाउ इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी विल सी द प्रॉब्लम्स रिलेटेड टू न्यूटन रैपसन लोड फ्लो एनालिसिस लेट एस सी सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूलेज व्हिच विल बी यूजफुल फॉर सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम द पावर फॉर्मूला दैट इज द रियल पावर एंड द रिएक्टिव पावर व्हिच इज अगेन द सेम एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन Gauss Seidel analysis, which is coming from the complex power S, which is equal to the P plus J Q, and this can be written as B I conjugate. So we were using the basic fundamental formula for the complex power, and instead of using the current conjugate, we will use the voltage conjugate. So there will be a negative sign in the reactive power. The cosine term. will be used for the real power and the sine term will be used for the reactive power rest terms are as usual as what we have discussed in the previous tutorial on gauss seidel analysis the difference between gauss seidel and newton raphson is basically in gauss seidel we use linear equations here we will focus on non linear equation we will consider that bus 1 is basically a slack bus or the reference bus and we will be updating the power that is the real power and the reactive power for each iteration with respect to a matrix which is known as the jacobian matrix and on the right hand side you have the angle updation and the voltage updation so the jacobian matrix is basically a square matrix which can be written in a compact form as j1 j2 j3 and j4 so these element in the block di matrix is basically as j1 the second block we will be taking as j2 and the third block we will take as j3 and the fourth block we will take as j4 and this power mismatch is written in a compact form as delta p and delta q and the phase angle of the voltage and the magnitude mismatch is written as del del by del voltage if you observe that in j1 it is basically the power with respect to the phase angle j2 is basically the power with respect to the voltage and j3 and j4 are with respect to the reactive power in the similar manner phase angle and the voltage so the system specifications are like this where you have the total number of buses considering to be n where the pv bus or the voltage control bus if we take to be m then the pq bus is basically n minus m because the total number of buses are n having known this concept we can divide the sub matrices of the jacobian matrix the sizes of j1 to j4 and the size of delta p delta q as such here the real power is specified for n minus 1 buses where 1 indicate the slack bus q r for the pq buses and the different sizes of the jacobian matrix combine to form the total jacobian size which is equal to 2 n minus m minus 2 and it is a square matrix so 2 n minus m minus 2 where n is the total number of buses m is the pv bus and you have minus 2 here the terms j1 to j4 can be obtained using the concept of differential of the power term so j1 which is a relation of p and delta here the off diagonal terms are basically the differentiation of power with respect to the phase angle and the diagonal terms are with respect to its own angle so the voltage the formula for the off diagonal and the diagonal which comes from again the power formula for j1 term is given here similarly for j2 which is the relation between power and the voltage magnitude for the off diagonal and the diagonal terms we can obtain like this these expressions will be useful in solving the problem similar for j3 and j4 which is q delta term and q voltage term the off diagonal terms and the diagonal terms for j3 and j4 are given by these expressions now in the newton raphson method the basic algorithm or the procedure that we need to follow is basically first we need to initialize the pq bus with the given voltage as 1 and the angle to be 0 at the initial value so it is 0th iteration the pv buses angle will be taking as 
compute the power mismatch in the second step where the PQ bus compute what is the power mismatch, real power and the reactive power. And for PV bus, you compute only the real power. Jacobian matrix need to be calculated in the third step where J1 to J4 elements need to be estimated using the formula which is given in the previous slide. And then we need to solve linear system of equation. So the non-linear system of equation is converted to linear form with the elements J1 to J4 and the variable delta x and delta s via factorization method. So we need to update the variables each and every iteration of the voltage and the phase angle and need to check the conversion whether the power mismatch, the real power and reactive power is less than the threshold limit which is set by the problem. Now let us see a problem. This is the same problem that we have solved using the boss siddle method but now we will solve using the newton raphson method and obtain the power flow solution. The single end diagram is shown in this figure where the impedances values connecting between the various buses are given. So these are the impedances and its unit is in per unit. The base power we will be taking as 100 MBA. So there are three buses, 1, 2 and 3, where 1 is basically the generator bus, the 2 is basically the load bus or the PQ bus. The third bus, if you see it, here you have the power which is delivered. So it is a generator bus. And we have to treat one of the bus as slack bus, especially the generator bus. So out of one and three, one bus can be slack bus. So in the problem, it is said that the slack bus is basically the first bus with a voltage magnitude of 1.05 and zero. Now let us see how to solve this problem using neutron raphson. So first we need to obtain the admittance matrix of the single line diagram connecting impedances. So all the impedances has to be connected first to the admittance value using the formula y equal to 1 by z. Now remember this step of y bus computation we have already done in the gauss seidel method for this particular problem. So I will not repeat it here. We will convert this rectangular form to the polar form and get the magnitude and the phase for each element of the Y bus. Remember here, the magnitude which is given here is basically in per unit, but the angle which is given is basically in radian. So these angles are basically the radian angles. Now the power flow equations for bus number two and bus number three, one is basically the slack bus. So we'll start from bus number two and bus number three. Remember bus number two is a PB bus and bus number 3 is basically the PQ bus. So we need to find the power P2 for bus number 2, power P3 for bus number 3, and the reactive power for bus number 2. So uh, we will use the formula that we have seen in the formula slide, splitting the voltage which are associated with bus number 2 and bus number 3. So these formulas we will use to compute the power active and the reactive. Second, we need to form the Jacobian matrix, which is again the differentiation of the power with respect to the phase angle and the voltage. So real power and reactive power, we are using it here. So on this power's expression, we need to differentiate to find the Jacobian matrix. So Jacobian matrix is again the component J1 to J4, which are block matrix components, which will be obtained using these formulas. Now the computation will start from the initial system conditions where the scheduled power in per unit for bus number 2 we will be computing using the formula of the power which is equal to minus 400 plus J250. So this is the real power and this is reactive power and then you have what is the total power base what we have taken. So that gives to be minus 4 minus J2.5 per unit. So the power scheduled for bus number 3 is basically 2 per unit with a base of 100. Voltage specification for the slack bus is 1.05 angle 0 which is given in the problem and for the PV bus the magnitude of the voltage V3 is 1.04 per unit. Initial estimate of second bus voltage and phase angle are taken 1 and 0 and the third bus angle is taken as 0. We will start with the first iteration compute the power residuals, the change in the power between scheduled and the calculated power in each iteration for delta P2, delta P3 and delta Q2. 
so that will be equal to the p2 scheduled minus p2 zeroth iteration which is the initial guess p3 scheduled minus p3 initial guess q2 scheduled minus q2 initial guess so these are the values that we will get as the power residuals now the jacobian matrix equation we need to form so this is the jacobian matrix which comes from the formula substituting the different values of the admittance and the voltage and here we have the component del p and del q and here you have the component of del and del v so the voltage update that we need to do after the first iteration so the first iteration whatever the angle we need to update and the voltage depends upon its initial guess so initial guess will be added upon the first value to get the first iterative update of the angle and the voltage in the second iteration we will follow the same procedure so here you have the jacobian matrix again and these values we have to get it after the first iteration and then we need to update the voltages and the phase angle after the second iteration so that will depend upon the first iteration values of the angle and the voltage so that will be put in this equation so new angle and the voltage voltage is in per unit and angle is in radian we are getting it after the update of these terms now same procedure we follow for the third iteration computing from the second step we will update the third iteration angle and the voltage taking the values of the second iteration and we will see that the solution will converge after the third step because the voltages are no longer changing so v2 and v3 which is the final bus voltage that we get it shows the maximum mismatch that we get is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 this is a very very small number so the convergence is achieved after three iterations and we have excellent numerical stability and this typical engineering accuracy requirement to stop the iteration can be taken very low that is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 so the voltages we have compute for the second bus and the third bus now for the slack bus and the pv bus we need to calculate the power so calculate the reactive power of bus number 3 using these formulas which we have seen in the slide slack bus we need to compute the real power and the reactive power using the formulas which are given to us so once we have computed the voltages v2 and v3 v1 is already given we can compute the reactive power active power for the different buses so the solution summary for this problem we got the voltages v2 and v3 and we have computed the real power and the reactive power of the different buses in the three iteration the solution has converged with the numerical stability and it is suitable for the large system now once we have obtained the voltage and the power we can easily obtain the line flow calculations loss computations voltage stability analysis so this is similar to what we have discussed in the boss seidel problem which is again repeating here so we stopped our solution here and we can further compute these values if it is required so this complete our discussion of load flow analysis with boss seidel and newton lasa thank you for now